Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Bibb County Board of Education. Oh, Bibb County Board of Education. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going back to the Board of Education, y'all. <laughs> Don't take a vote on that. Bibb County Commission special call meeting. And today is May the 18th, I believe. And this is the uh, special call meeting to uh, go over the mayor's proposed budget. I appreciate everyone being here today, and I'd like to officially call this meeting to order. If you don't mind, I'm going to walk down to the podium and go over some uh, brief information and present my budget to you. At the completion of the uh, presentation, we'll make sure that all commissioners uh, get a copy of the proposed budget. Once again, thank you everyone for being here today. This is the part that I've been waiting for for a while to be able to present a proposed budget to this commission. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about where we were, what we've been doing over the last 120, 30 days, and where we're going. So I'd like to start out with this, and it's a quote. It says, don't tell me your priority, what your priorities are. Show me what you spend your money, and I'll tell you what they are. There's a lot of truth to this quote from James Frick, and I kept this in mind as I developed the proposed budget for making Bibb County for this fiscal year. I also kept in mind the recommendations for the making Bibb County forward transition team and the conversations that I've had with the commissioners and many community leaders. I believe that this budget before you reflects the priority of this community. This budget is not, process is not new to me. Before becoming mayor, as a small businessman, I, crib, I created and lived by budgets. Whenever I think about how we spend taxpayer dollars, I think about the people who pay the taxes and how our decisions should impact them. That is why first and foremost, this budget is fiscally responsible and includes no tax increase for making Bibb County families. Especially now, as our community begins to recover from the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, we simply cannot ask our citizens to pay more. Making Bibb families must live within their budget, and so should we. We can address the priorities outlined by the Making Bibb Forward Transition Team without raising taxes. To accomplish this, we had to make some hard choices. Throughout this budget, you will note that I've done my best to paint where it ain't. You will note that means directing dollars where they are most needed, resisting pressure to increase spending at the administrative level, and instead making tough cuts to worthwhile programs and outside agencies. We'll go ahead and present the proposed budget presentation. We always start out with our vision and our mission, and we'll do so tonight. Making Bibb County will be the center of development, culture, and opportunity, remembering our past while inspiring hope and pride in our future. Our mission for Making Bibb County provide essential infrastructure services, programs, creating a vibrant economic and cultural climate, enabling individuals, families, and businesses to prosper. As I mentioned earlier, our transition team was composed of people all around Macon Bibb County that brought unique perspectives from all across the community. They focus on these strategic focus areas, and I want to mention those to you tonight because all of these areas will be addressed at some point during this budget and during our administration. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Public safety. Economic development. Education and workforce development. Recreation and tourism. As we began this process in 2021, 
We formed an initiative called Clean Streets Matter. And as many of you participated in many of those events and came together as a board of commissioners to make sure that we placed a priority on keeping our streets clean. During that process, we were able to eliminate 232 illegal dumps, over 2,200,000 pounds collected of trash, swept 831 pounds to the Macon Water Authority, but most importantly, we had 99 neighborhood cleanups collecting 109,000 pounds of trash. Our community came together during a time of crisis after the death, untimely death, of two men that froze to death during the cold winter months. We opened the Brookdale Center, formerly called the Brookdale Warming Center, where we engaged dozens of departments, agencies, organizations, and schools. Hundreds of volunteers served nearly now almost 500 people at that location. So far, 40 people have moved to permanent housing. 16 have been reunited with their families, and we're only just getting started. People are finding jobs. They're getting ID cards, birth certificates. They're connecting to services and much more. And I'm pleased that all nine commissioners supported our effort to spend $1.5 million to invest into the building at Brookdale to help our most vulnerable. As we continue to focus on community, we launched a 30 and 30 light fight. I am pleased to announce today that not only will we reach our goal of 30, we're ahead of schedule. On tomorrow, you would receive some notice that we'll be announcing the demolition of three structures on Pursley Street. Something that we could all celebrate that's gonna serve as a gateway to Linwood Cemetery. Those three structures make our 20 9th, 30th, and 31 house demolished in less than 30 business days. But we won't stop there. We already have a list that we'll be presenting next week of more than 50 that are being prepared for demolition as we speak. Public safety, as we all know, has been one of our primary and very important priorities. That's why the pay scale Implementing the pay scale was one of our top priorities. But this commission also allocated funds for jail improvements, and I thank you for that. With over $3 million going to the jail itself, through various funding through general fund and through SPLOS. You also allocated funds for a much needed new fire training facility that I believe will not only make us a safer community, but also help us recruit and retain the very best firefighters. We can't talk about public safety without first addressing mental health. That's why I'm, I'm proud that this commission supported the Making Mental Health Matters initiative. Opening in our neighborhoods to increase access to services at no cost. Already there are three pop-up events scheduled and monthly partner meetings to streamline services. More importantly, we are meeting people that need the services the most where they're at. Small business serves a very vital function in Macon Bibb County. And I had the privilege to make one of my first hires, Ms. Cherise Stevens, who is with us today, who's done an excellent job so far in the small business department. She has set up virtual sessions with webinars and working with local governments in the chamber. She has supported mentor recruitment. But more importantly, she has registered 36 new small businesses for technical assistance and updates on open solicitations. She opened the first small business incubator at Amerson River Park. Economic workforce and development education continue to be an issue that we must address in Macon Bibb County if we truly want to level the playing field for all of our community. We have been visiting multiple sites for new and existing businesses during our time together over the last several months, learning about services that offered, but also what the future needs holds for these businesses.
So where are we now? This is the proposed 22, 2022 budget. And we're going to begin with our top priority, which is public safety. I will say there's always been a challenge to hire good men and women in public safety. Not only from making Bibb County for all the challenges that we have, but throughout the entire United States. Recently, we you passed prior to my arrival a pay scale to give all of our employees a much needed pay raise. Our administration will continue to fund this on a yearly basis. We want to fully fund this pay scale throughout the year, but also we want to develop phase two of the pay scale to include a pay increase to fully fund the OPEB retirement benefits to make sure that we not only retain and we recruit, we have recruited new officers, but it does no good when we recruit new officers and then those with most experience leave for lack of pay and benefits. So it's our desire to make sure that we move on to phase two to fund a pay scale for all of our first responders so we can work on that compression issue that we've heard so many years before that we have been un unsuccessful in delivering. As I mentioned last week, this budget should reflect the priorities of our constituents. And as many of you campaigned alongside me in the last couple of years, we realized that Macon struggled with our clean streets. Therefore, this budget that I'm presenting tonight includes a $1 million additional funding dedicated to funding for our community beautification efforts, cleaning the streets, cutting the right-of-ways in the grass, maintaining interstate gateways. We've also formed and reunited a great partnership with Keep Making Bid Beautiful. Without the effort of their director, Caroline Childs, throughout the last couple of months, a lot of this would not be possible, and with her board doing an excellent job. For that reason, it's my proposal to give them an additional funding of $20,000 to keep making Bid Beautiful to continue our effort and our cooperation with them. Current workforce and economic development. This budget echoes the sentiments that we heard during our many visits. We went to the former Brown and Williamson building. We all went to the Dean Baldwin at the airport, to John Deere, to Yancey. And you heard the same things that I heard. The reason we went to those events is we want to make sure that, that we have our ears where they're supposed to be. We're hearing and then we're acting. What they tell us is they need more workforce. As you remember during that presentation, the director of the Industrial Authority said, this is what we use the money for. This is why we need the runway extension. We need seed money to, to build another several hangars there at the airport that pay good paying jobs. We need money to recruit the right business to Brown and Williamson. We need the money to provide the right infrastructure. We may need to buy right away. We may need to buy access roads. I am committed and this budget shows an additional $1 million going to industrial authority, urban development authority, and workforce development. We can't stop our black fight against blight with just 30 and 30. As you recall during out my campaign and shortly after I was sworn in to office, I presented an option to make code enforcement a separate department. And all nine of the commissioners approved the hiring of JT Rickson as our code enforcement director. Many of our constituents have come together to let us know that they are tired of seeing the blight in our community. It creates a haven for crime, it creates an eyesore, and it hurts economic development. Therefore, in my budget proposal, I am proposing to spend an additional $500,000, and this is how it will be divided. I would like for at least one half of that amount to be used to hire five additional code enforcement officers that we need to get out of the hole that we're in now and to continue to make the improvements we need to do. But I also want the additional $250,000 of that, the second half, 
to be used to truly help the people in the communities that need it the most. As I've traveled around the communities and as I've looked through the books of the code enforcement in, in the previous years, what I noticed was sometimes there was an effort to do what we're supposed to be doing. And sometimes we were given citations and sometimes we were going to court. But no matter how many citations we gave about those cars left in the yard from an abandoned mechanic shop, about those trees overgrown on the lot next to the lady when she has snakes and rodents come to her house, about that fallen porch at an area, it does no good to, to issue a citation to someone who simply cannot afford it at that time. We can't just give a citation and turn around and say we've done our job and move on down the road. We must put our money where our mouth is. So this $250,000 will be used for contractual services. So not only will we give that citation or encourage that person to move it, if they can't afford to do it, we're gonna take that initiative for them. We're gonna get rid of those cars, we're gonna get rid of those debris on these lots. We're gonna do what we need to do. Listen, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are other communities now that are doing it the right way. They're using best practices. Savannah, I know, has a program. I talked to a couple of commissioners about that. Very successful program. Yes, we would put a lien on the property there. Yes, we would try to recover that money, but right now we need to take care of the issue. And simply looking the other way and walking down the road and kicking the can down the road is not serving us very well. As I look at this next slide, I've got this nagging voice in my ear from Commissioner Lucas. She, uh, she's a proponent for pedestrian safety. Her board, along with Sharice Stevens and many others, um, have really been strong advocates to the pedestrian safety board. And we need to be a more cooperating force as a commission and as a mayor. I've also sat and listened to many commissioners who get calls on a daily basis from neighbors who are worried about their children playing in a road that's supposed to have 25 miles per hour, but people are going 50 and 60 miles per hour down the road. We have to do something about this, but we can't do something about it just by talking. So, so in this budget, I'm including $100,000 in additional funding for traffic common devices, speed bumps, signage, and more. And I look forward to working with that board that we discussed when we get the regulations finalized for the American Rescue Plan, so we can put some additional monies to make sure that we provide a safe and secure atmosphere for our children, our elderly, and people to walk the streets. We shouldn't lead the state of Georgia or be in the top 10 in the Southeast United States for people's lives taken on the roads. No excuses about what they're wearing or how dark it is. They should have proper lighting. It's our job to educate them they're homeless, we're gonna provide an opportunity so they won't be on the streets. We can do this and improving this budget, we'll just do just that. We talked about mental health just a moment ago through the Mental Health Matters Initiative. And what I wanna say is this, this budget includes several requests from mental health professionals. And I'm happy to say today that each of those professionals, including the Macon Health Department, as well as River Edge, is getting 100% of the funding they requested because mental health matters. Business environment. This slide here can be some, somewhat controversial at times as we navigate those words planning and zoning. As many of us receive calls on a daily basis, I know I do, from concerned citizens, maybe in neighborhoods, concerned businesses that want to relocate to Macon Biff County or developers. And what they tell me is we have to do better. We overcharge people for business licenses and permits and, and zoning permits. We overcharge people for, for several things that do with signage and starting a new business there. And it has to be addressed. So this budget does include, with an asterisk, does include additional funding for planning and zoning. However, I met with the director, told him about my dissatisfaction with some of the things that I felt like were going on there to clear up any inconsistencies. I told him I thought we could address more people doing the right thing if the prices were less and we had better service. So hire additional people there for, for providing a better service, but also to lower those fees. You shouldn't go across the Houston County line and get a substantial reduction on a permit to start a business there. 
We want people to come to Macon Biff County. So we have to be business friendly. We have to be the place that people want to be. So they're having a meeting with their commission. They're going to have a new rate sheet come out that reduces their fees. And if approved there, they're going to come back to us and let us know what those fees are. This budget now includes a increase of $210,000 to their budget. But if they don't decrease that amount of their fees, I'm going to ask you to decrease the amount of the money that we're allocating to them. We have to do a better job, and it starts here. Now we get to the boring part. Not that my speaking hadn't been boring enough, but we get to the part where we talk about the numbers. I told you at the beginning we have no tax increases this year, so that should satisfy your mind, but just kind of gives you a general idea of where we come from from the general fund and the millage rate. You look at 2019, we've gone back a few years here uh, on the general fund, and you can see the general fund budget and expenditures uh, have moved up. But what I want you to notice is last year's budget started out at 159, $159 million, and this commission did a good job of being very protective of the, of the budget. And they did that, and I say this commission, those of you who were before, you made sure that we took the pandemic in mind, and we knew that there was some risk there, and we, we, there was a lot of uncertainty there. And you set a budget that was lower than probably what we needed to do, but once the finances came in, we realized we were in better shape than we thought we were, and therefore that budget uh, was increased. But if you look at that fiscal year 2021 amended budget, you'll see we had a budget around $173.5 million. Uh, if you look in fiscal year 22 that we're projecting, we're only slightly above that, despite some other challenges that you'll hear about. Also, you'll look at the 2016 through 2022 uh, millage rate to see the path that we have taken there, uh, and we have leveled out, and I expect that we'll be decreasing that in the near future. Earlier, I mentioned the expenditures that we have, and it, it, where you spend your money at uh, shows what your priorities are. And, and the, the biggest thing that you can gain from this chart here is to show you just how much we spend on public safety. It's something that one day I hope we would need to spend less because we're doing a better job on the front end, and that's why all these initiatives are going too. But right now, we have to be 100% behind fully funding public safety to provide a safe place for our children a safe place for our families and safe place for employees to come in here to get those good high paying jobs that we all seek. This next chart will show you a little bit about where we spend our money out and you'll get a more detailed analysis in your packet. But as you'll see that most of these categories we, we do increase from 2020 to 2021 to our fiscal year 22 budget in those categories like health, welfare. Particularly if you look at the industrial side, we talk about economic development. We're talking about trying to attract those businesses or to help our existing businesses out. We're talking about trying to be a true partner to making Bibb County public schools, the College and Career Academy, to make sure that our children get those jobs of tomorrow. This is the investment we're making by increasing this money in economic development. Earlier I mentioned to you about some hard choices and decisions that need to be made. And a lot of those decisions you see right here on this slide, they shouldn't be new to you. I've sat in this very chamber over the last several years and heard some very good debate on what some people call outside agencies, making very good arguments to fund or not to fund. As you can see by this budget and my proposal, it zeroes out. Each of those agencies, including Fort Hawkins, Historic Douglas Theater, the Museum of Arts and Sciences, Tubman African American Museum, Sports Hall of Fame, Macon Arts Alliance, and Navicent Atrium. Not to mean that all of those organizations are not good, not to suggest in any way that they're not valuable to our community. But we have to make hard decisions. We're elected officials that have to get the job done. As you can see by the challenges that I will suggest in just a moment, we have to make some cuts. We're not going to turn our backs on these folks. I personally spoke to all these organizations to let them know where we're at and that I would not be including money in the budget for them. There have been several years before that there were some indications that this was coming in the future. 
and many of them have planned accordingly. But we also must remember that we'll be having some conversations in the next 30 days about the American Rescue Money. And one of those areas that you can compensate is tourism. And all these organizations here, with the exception of Navisant, involve tourism, and we'll be able to take care of their needs. So let's talk about the challenges. I personally met with all nine of you during the last couple of weeks and sent an email to each of you. And that email read something like this. We have a $15 million worth of new expenses in 2022 budget during administration that I am in charge of now or ahead of now. How were you thinking that we were gonna pay for that? And each of you had some very good ideas. We have to implement the pay scale. That's part of this $15 million. We have debt payments and uncertainty of future revenue services due to ongoing pandemic. We've had increased pension payments. We've had staffing shortages in public safety and other departments. On your agenda tonight at tonight's meeting, you'll see a resolution or ordinance for next referral of next week where I'm requesting that you transfer $8.6 million from our general fund to debt services to go ahead and prepay debt toward that $15 million out of this budget because it makes good financial sense. Like all challenges, we have opportunities. We have many opportunities in making Bibb County and that's why we all choose to live here, to stay here, to work here, and to play here. We have a new focus on allocating funding based on the needs of our community. Our community has spoken in this budget. Reviewing splice project funding to meet current community needs. During our conversations and meeting with you, during the last couple of weeks, we discussed the potential of having other hearings on SPLOS dollars. You see, the law requires us to spend the money like we told the people we were gonna spend it when we passed the SPLOS before. There were some items that were included in that budget and we will spend it accordingly. Well, there were always some items in that budget that each of you commissioners put in there of some projects that you wanted to do. Some of those projects are way ahead of schedule. Some of them have money that was allocated that we don't need the entire amounts. And I'll be speaking to you soon about how we can reallocate those monies for the new needs that you may have in your community and to complete those projects that we promise folks. We also have the potential passage of the OLAS, which will provide tax relief for property owners, but also do the second part of the salary scale that we talked about. And as you may notice, this OLAS uh, is not included in this budget. Not one dime in this budget did I put for any potential OLAS funds that we may receive because the people have not spoken yet. We're gonna have an election on November the 2nd of this year and there'll be a referendum that'll allow every Macon Bibb County registered voter and those that register between now and then the opportunity to decide whether or not this one cent sales tax is something they want to do. We're not here to advocate for that. We're here to provide the proper education to all of our citizens so they can make an informed decision. If the OLAS passes, it would be my intent to fully roll back taxes 100%, up to seven or eight mils, but also gives us the much needed cash infusion that would allow us to do the pay scale that we greatly need to retain our first responders. The American Rescue Plan could help tourism, other agencies with deficits, and provide funds for much needed projects. We have not received our, our ARC money yet. Just wanna let you know that the deposit has not been made yet. We do expect to get the money in and we've been anxiously waiting the regulations that do change daily. I've been in communication with state, local and federal authorities to make sure that we are at the cutting edge of doing what we believe is the best practices. But keep in mind, I'm just one person to bring the information to you. Ultimately, that decision we made not only by you as the elected officials, but by many of the people out in the community that will give you the information you need and the direction that you need. But please remember at the end of the day, you are the elected official. They have chosen you as their representative to do what you believe is best for the community. And I look forward to being able to explain that information through our education process over the next several months. In conclusion, we have the budget timeline. As you can tell from April the 5th through April the 30th, we have met with all the departments and the outside agencies. 
our staff has been tirelessly working over the last several months to get the best product we can get that speaks for the people making Bibb County in front of you, the commissioners who make the final decision. From May the 3rd to May the 14th, I'd like to personally thank each and every one of these commissioners who have personally met with me in my office and had very open, honest conversations. I saw that smile, Commissioner Bronson. In my office, or at least one person at the Zoom, <laughs> to discuss the priorities for your districts, the priorities that you have, the funding challenges that we have, and the concerns you have, and also the protocol that we go through and the procedure we go through to make sure that the public is educated about this vote and to make sure that you have all the information you need to make an informed decision when we take the final vote. Of course, today is May the 18th. This is the proposed 22 budget that I am presenting, and it's just that, it's a proposal. On May the 19th tomorrow, we already have information that we're running the Macon Telegraph that's gonna list the things that we're statutory required to do to inform the pud public about this vote. On May the 25th, we have a regular Committee of the Whole meeting. At the Committee of the Whole meeting that we have already scheduled, and we typically do on a monthly basis, we'll entertain thoughts, suggestions, and questions from each commissioner that may have them. Feel free between today and the 25th to submit any requests that you have to our office, the county manager, or myself, so we can get you all the information that you need and also be able to share that to other commissioners who may have similar concerns. We will do that as long as it takes to make sure that you're satisfied with the product. On June the 1st, we will have a public hearing. Public hearing will give a chance for the community to provide input themselves on our budget and the priorities that they may have that have not been addressed. We will return on June the 8th after hearing from the public on June the 1st for another committee of the whole meeting, which will also have the same type of work session to answer any questions, concerns, or make any changes that you desire. Feel free, again, any time between to come to my office, to send any emails, request any information that you need to make an informed decision. It is our hope and our desire that on June the 15th, that the commission will take a final vote on your 2022 budget for our citizens. But this time I've done a lot of talking. As you know, that this is just an opportunity that I have to present to you my budget proposal. We won't have a lot of discussion today on this issue, but I look forward to continue discussion. I think it's important for the community to know that this doesn't happen in a vacuum, that we are all a team. We have been working together uh, so far on this budget through your discussions with me, but this is not a final project. We hope to have that ready over the next several weeks. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna walk back to my seat. We'll make a few closing remarks, uh, and then we'll close this meeting and we'll take a brief recess into our regular scheduled meeting at six o'clock. Just a moment. Once again, uh, Ladies and gentlemen at home, I hope you are able to hear all the comments. We will have all this information online for your review. Uh, and each of these meetings will be televised to the same way that we've televised all of our meetings right now. So you'll have all the information you need to speak with your commissioners. Uh, commissioner, it's been my pleasure to work with you during this process. I look forward to continue uh, information and discussion between us and getting you all the tools you need to make a decision. So this time this does con conclude the mayor's proposed budget for 2022 and we'll take a brief recess until we're back at six o'clock. <laughs>